There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day. But who came up with this system? And is there any alternative to that as a way of telling time? Let's find out in this video. Let's first start with the Egyptians. Now, it was their culture that came up with the concept of dividing the day and night into 12 parts. So they had 10 hours in the daytime with one hour before sunrise and one hour before night. The nighttime was divided into 12 as well through the observation of star groups, minor constellations, if you will, called decans. Now, each of those decans rose around 40 minutes after the preceding one, and there were complicated tables made so that people could tell the time at night just by observing these decans. They were so important to the Egyptian culture that they're even inscribed inside the coffin lids so the dead can tell the time as well. From those Egyptians, we move on to the Babylonians. Now, it was the Babylonians that really embraced what's known as the sexagesimal system. That's the numerical system using 60 as its base. These days, we use the decimal system, in other words, using 10 as the base number. It was the Sumerians who used up, came up with the sexagesimal system first, but it was the Babylonians who embraced it and integrated it into everyday maths and calculations and more. Now, as to why 60, there's a couple of theories. First, 60 is what we call a highly composite number. It's got 12 factors, namely 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 and of course 60. Now, 2, 3 and 5 themselves are prime numbers. With so many factors, many fractions involving sexagesimal numbers are simplified. So, for example, one hour can be divided evenly into sections of 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 12, 10, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 minutes, and even 1 minute. Secondly, using the thumb, one can count to 12 on a single hand, using the bones of the four fingers. And if we use a second hand, then we can use that to count up to 60 on both. No one is absolutely sure but they're both compelling theories as to why 60 was chosen. Now, it was the Greeks that combined the 24 hours of the day from the Egyptians with the sexagesimal system into the minutes and the seconds that we use today. Now, there is an issue with time, however. I mentioned this in my other video on how long is a day, and if you haven't watched it, you can view it by clicking here. Now, the problem is, is that the concept of a second is no longer 100% accurate. Due to the moon and tidal effects, for example, when the Atlantic Ocean slams into the east coast of America, the Earth slows just a tiny, tiny bit. Now, that means that a second is no longer quite what we think it is. Our current definition of a second was established in the 1800s, and we've had to inject what are known as leap seconds into the world clocks to account for this slowing. Now, since 1927, 27 of those leap seconds have been inserted. The last one was at 11.59 and 60 seconds just before midnight on December the 31st, 2016. The other thing we mentioned at the start was, are there any alternatives to the 24-hour clock? Well, there is one, and it involves moving clocks to having 100 seconds, each of those being part of 100 minutes, and those minutes being part of 10 hours. However, there's 86,400 seconds as we know them today, and 100 by 100 times 10 actually makes 100,000. So in order to move to this new system of time, the concept of a second would be about 115% faster than our notion of a second today. However, it would make calculations with time far, far simpler. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to click subscribe below to ensure you don't miss an episode. And please feel free to leave a comment, topic suggestion, or question below. Shoot me an email, as always, at 5 ws and one h at gmail.com. And I'll say bye-bye for now.